<laughs> so there is a quick intro to my new seltzer system. So there's a few other videos on similar setups, but I wanted to show you mine, see if this is a option for you. If you're like me, you're spending a lot of money buying cans, bottles, whatever. Um, I just did the math and my average annual cost for my seltzer habit was around somewhere between $550 and $600 a year just for cans. Um, so I wanted to make a change and stop having to make all those trips to the grocery store and to the recycling center and this is what I came up with. So we're going to go through the whole system but the heart of the system is the McCann's uh, Big Mac and if you're into seltzer or have at least looked into making your own seltzer you've probably come across a similar uh, setup or a similar item. Uh, this is a carbonator and it basically consists of the motor uh, to pump water into a pressurized stainless steel tank here that uh, the gas is also um, pressurized into as well. So it's actually pretty simple. Uh, you just have a pressurized tank and you're pushing water and gas and it mixes. And there's a sensor here that tells you when it gets low, it turns on the pump and the gas is always pressurized. So it may look like a lot, but it's really not. So let's uh, get into each piece of the system and uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about this when we get there. So the first thing you need to think about when you're considering seltzer tap is uh, water supply. So many people would probably love to have this uh, in their sink setup. So maybe next to their other faucet they could just have a tower or some kind of valve on the sink that they can tap into or pour their seltzer from. So you may consider looking under your sink and finding a solution there. I, however, um, due to rental limitations, etc., etc., decided to do it from my laundry room. So I have my hookup here. So I <laughs> pulled a, a Y off of this so I could still split cold water to my washing machine. And this is just a regular like garden hose thing I got off of Amazon. And I have a connector here with the barb fitting that feeds my water out. So I'm not sure what pressure my water is. It's not, you know, super high, but it is good enough. Um, but not good enough to not require that uh, water pump. So this is routed just up to this water filter. And this is important because you want to get the water as tasteless as possible or you don't want any hard um, hard things like ammonia or chlorine or whatever is in your water um, to be popping out when you carbonate it because those flavors will be more intense once it's carbonated. So once you have the water in, I have, I guess I have these, um, these fittings here that I bought to um, to accompany the filter. You can also use plastic fittings. Um, you can use brass, but you can only use brass up until the point where the CO2 hits it, hits the water, because something about chemical reaction of carbonated water on brass is uh, potentially dangerous or poisonous. So you'll see brass fittings on the gas tank and on the water filter before we get to the McCann tank but not after. We'll be using stainless steel for that. So water in gets filtered. Um, this is the filter that I'm using right now and I'm not sure I would recommend it. If you watch other videos you'll see that people have the ability to purge air from their filters and I think that would <laughs> I would really like to have that option on this which I do not. Um, it hasn't been like a major issue something that I would like break down the whole system and fix it for but uh, it would be a little bit more peace of mind that, you know, I'm not losing carbonation just due to a little bit of oxygen that's getting in um, from the filter. So, anyways, water out from the filter comes down, and this is where I cut a hole in my mini fridge here. And at this point, I guess I'll talk about the mini fridge itself. So we know that seltzer, carbon or carbonation in general, is dependent on temperature. So a cold soda will be more refreshing and it will retain that carbonation longer than a warmer soda. And I'm sure that 
you could <laughs> attest to that in your simple just experiences with uh, cracking a can of warm seltzer. Um, so we have to chill it somehow, and this is the most, <laughs> I would say, expensive, space-consuming, and um, pain-in-the-butt, basically, part of standing up your own system. Now, I went with this solution, which is not very common, um, but perhaps will be more common in the future, at least for home setups, because the way that restaurants and bars do it is more expensive and more complicated and, and requires more specialized equipment and um, uh, potentially ice. So if you have an ice machine, maybe um, you're willing to you know, cut it up and, and do what you need to do to make this a part of that system. And that would honestly be ideal. Um, but for me to keep the cost down and to make it reasonable enough to explain to my wife and tell her why I'm doing all this, um, you know, I could buy a $25 fridge off of Facebook or Craigslist and, you know, basically do the same exact, exact thing. So the downside to the fridge, um, is that this is a two and a half gallon tank. So when you initially start or set up the system, um, you're going to fill this tank directly from the tap over wherever you're tapping into. And the temperature of all the water in this tank, although it is car will be carbonated, um, will be the same as it was when it <laughs> entered a few seconds prior, right? So you do have to get this entire tank chilled down to the temperature that that you want to serve it at basically and as you start using seltzer right um, this starts dropping until the sensor clicks right so the sensor realizes it's low it's going to pump all that in and then all of a sudden all the water that's coming in is going to start you know pulling some of that chill from the existing seltzer and you're kind of going to get some temperature fluctuations now, if you're just serving yourself occasionally, once an hour or whatever, topping off your glass, which I also have ice in, you know, it's not noticeable whatsoever. And I'm really glad that it's set up, this setup works. I've seen some daisy chains systems where someone has used two tanks. And I think that if you are having an issue, that is a great solution. Um, but for me, um, and my personal use, this is totally fine. And it's uh, been working amazing. So back to the hoses, we have our water coming in, right? And it's coming into our water pump here. And the water pump will pump it to its outlet here. And there's a stainless steel fitting that comes with these McCann Big Macs. Um, that's fit perfect to go to the tank. So this is the water outlet from the pump and the inlet to the tank. And if you were like space conscious and you're doing a similar setup to myself here, where you have to have the tank inside a cooling element, um, and you wanted to take the motor off, this is where you, would, you wouldn't use a stainless steel, you would have to find other fittings like everywhere else um, and just use the same hose that you've been using to bring the water to the tank. Um, so that's how you would do that. And then you would also have to extend the sensor um, plug here. And I've seen people do that with just simple uh, extension cords. So water's pumped in and now we have water pushed into the pressurized tank. We also have the gas, which is regulated here, and I think it's right around 100 PSI. I think it can be technically less if this, since the system's in the fridge, but this is sort of its, what I've found to be its happy space. So I have the gas coming in, and the gas comes in right here. So we have water in, gas in, and this is my dispense out. So that's to this valve here. This is a Becker hand valve. Um, came recommended from another YouTube video, which I'll link below because he does a much better job explaining the technical aspects of all these pieces and parts. But I'm using quarter inch hose. So all these barb fittings are quarter inch and um, just to keep it consistent and simple. Uh, the Confusing things that I came across was just making sure to have all of the right fittings, especially for that part over there, which you probably don't have to deal with. But, um, you know, the gas bottle fittings and the 
the water, like NPT fittings, are probably the most confusing part. Um, also, I did end up using Oedeker clamps. I bought one of those uh, Oedeker pliers or whatever um, to do it the right way. Um, I was worried that <clears throat> these valves wouldn't come with like a means of connection uh, with the barb fitting, but this one actually had came with the correct quarter inch outlet. And I can just plug and play basically. Now, I make it sound simple, but I did run into plenty of issues with the fittings and finding out what I needed. Basically, you just need to draw it out, know what you want, and do the math up front so you don't have to make more than one order like I did. Um, so let's talk about cost. Here's a breakdown for what I spent on my system here. And again, I would just want to emphasize, this is the annual cost I've been spending on seltzer cans. Um, maybe I was drinking a lot, but there's no judgment here, right? So I paid 150 bucks for the McCann Big Mac, and I didn't include shipping because I feel like a lot of people could find deals on these, and I think this is a good average number between you know, people finding great deals and those people who are just going to have to bite the bullet and buy something off eBay like I did. So I paid 150 and then I paid a little bit of shipping on top of that. The CO2 tank I actually got for free, but I think 60 again is a nice reasonable number. Like, I think that's a 40 pound tank right there. So I think um, most reasonable people would get a smaller tank, but that was free and it was full. So I cannot, <laughs> I can't complain. Mini fridge, 25 bucks. You could probably find one for free on the side of the road, um, or you could pay as much as like 50 bucks for one, or 100 bucks, you know, depending on how uh, eager you are to get going. Um, the hose and the fittings rounded up to be about $82. Uh, you can spend more on the hose, of course. Um, I used BevFlex, or BevSeal, I forget the name of it. The hand valve itself was $73, so that's not cheap either. My total came up to be around $390. And that is a one-time cost to stand this up. Of course, we have, you know, dis um, you know, we have to recharge the gas occasionally. This tank will probably last me over a year, and we have w our water bill. And uh, for me, I put fruit in mine. Um, now that this is new to me still, so I've been using fruit, but we could probably find other flavoring options. But that would still include additional cost. So. But for me, this year I still have about $200 where I can buy fruit and still only be spending as much as I did before. So, quick vid on the setup. Please ask any specific questions in the uh, comments and I can definitely look up, you know, part numbers or whatever I can to help you. It's kind of hard to prepare all that for a video when you're not really a YouTuber, but let me know if you have any questions or comments, and have a good one.